Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. It's the third Sunday of Easter. He is risen. Love wins. It's more than just a message for Easter Sunday. It's a message for every day. It's a message for this Sunday, the good news, the better story. Let us worship God and share in that story together this third Sunday of Easter. Good morning. Our call to worship this morning is from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 8. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the, the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as someone who is untimely born, he appeared also to me. Let us worship God. The first scripture reading is from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10, the resurrection of Jesus. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. 
So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Here ends the reading. The tomb is empty. There's a story and experience about the risen Lord. And then there is another story. Listen to our second reading that continues that story from Matthew 28. Now while the women were going, some of the guard went into the city and they told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, Now you must say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while you were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and they did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jews to this day. Once upon a time, it is an invitation to imagination. Once upon a time, I built ships and forts and race cars with Legos, and I would play basketball for hours, taking the game-winning shot, and I would explore the neighborhood park, taking home a treasure of acorns. Once upon a time, I would climb a tree with my daughter to hide from pirates. And I would put up a kite with my kids to imagine what it felt like to fly. And I would take my boys exploring and we would find little bottle cap boats. Where might ants go in this boat? And magic money made from flat rocks. What would you buy? Once upon a time, Galileo imagined the earth circling around the sun. And Michelangelo imagined the statue of David in a block of granite. And Beethoven imagined those first four notes of his fifth symphony. And once upon a time, Einstein imagined traveling through the universe on a beam of light. And da Vinci imagined that curious smile on the Mona Lisa. And some ancient theologians imagined in the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Once upon a time, the first words, the first step, the first idea in discovering something new and something beautiful, once upon a time, the invitation to imagination. But somehow along the way, we so often lose our imagination And we lose the wonder of looking for anything new in life. Perhaps it's just part of growing up and so we leave behind imagination like we leave behind a much-loved toy. Or perhaps it's the cold water of disappointment, maybe one after another. Or perhaps it's that constant chorus all around us. Imagination is not real and we want to fit in. Or perhaps we lose our imagination because we come to believe that we have a handle on how things work and there's just less wonder. But you see, the central task for the church, for sermon, for sacrament, and hymn is one of imagination once upon a time. By that I do not mean fiction or fantasy or make-believe, but rather it means to consider new possibilities, better ways of life, good hopes, truths that have been waiting to be seen about ourselves and others in our world and God. It's to have the courage to look beyond the corner of what we know to the mystery of what could be. 
Certainly there is a place in our Christian faith to think about it with our reason and to experience it with our emotions. But Christian faith has always been more than what we think and how we feel. Rather, you see, it's to look through the Bible, the story of the Bible, the better story, to see the world as God sees it, and to trust that that story is the story that really matters. Once upon a time, there was a better story. It was the first light of Easter morning. You see, the stone is rolled back and the tomb is empty. And as Matthew tells the story, both the women and the guards are there and they see that. And they both experience the earthquake and appearance of an angel. Both the women and the guards are afraid. I mean, who wouldn't be? The guards fall down and freeze. And it seems in the story they're sort of shooed aside like flies at a picnic. And then the women hear a message. The crucified Jesus has been raised from the dead. You will see him back home in Galilee. Now go and tell the disciples. Tell his friends. And so there is an empty tomb and a message risen and not dead. But an empty tomb and a message do not really mean resurrection. It's just an empty tomb and the message might be true or not. What really happened What's the story on that first Easter morning? The guards are bribed to tell a story. It's an ordinary, just like any other day, things can't change story. There's no faith, there's no hope, there's no imagination. A tomb is a tomb and dead is dead. So nothing beyond the everyday could have really happened. There's no beauty, no wonder, no awe. They will not look around the corner of the mystery at what might be. Rather, it's a simple story. It's a back of the newspaper, last page story. Stolen body, they say. There's nothing to ponder here. Life hasn't changed. Just move along. But then there's another story. For those with ears and a heart to hear empty tomb and message of resurrection. Once upon a time, the women also have a story. With imagination filled with faith and hope and love, the women experience the risen Jesus. More than empty tomb and angel, you see, it is the love and the power of God breaking into this world. With just enough imagination, the women experience much more than what has been. They discover what has been, or we might say who has been, waiting to be seen. They have a better story. The Lord is risen, and we have seen him. The tomb is empty. The everyday story is the body is stolen. The better story is risen. Once upon a time, what can you imagine? For many people in ordinary time, Easter is a pleasant but unsensational holiday. It's a day for bunnies and pastel colors and eggs and chocolate and a nice dinner. Easter is about an everyday story, and then Monday... They just move on. But this isn't the year for an ordinary Easter story. With the COVID-19 pandemic, rising unemployment, and a diminishing economy, many people are, are listening a little closer for a better Easter story. With grief and loss all too real, longer lines at food banks and so many people with anxieties and depressions feeling pulled toward despair in their isolation. A thin Easter story can feel like a cheap attempt to patch over the pain. The story of a stolen body body and Easter bunnies is not enough. 
I was imagining one story and then a better story, and when I was doing that, I was reminded of Tony Horowitz's book, A Voyage Long and Strange. It's a book about explorers who came to America before the Puritans in 1620. And most interesting, I find his chapter on Christopher Columbus. It seems that Columbus was convinced by all the stories that he had heard that Asia was just west of Europe. Sail far enough across the sea and you come to the Orient. And despite all that Columbus discovered in this new world, he never believed that it was a new world. He was stuck, you see, with old maps, old ideas, old views, old stories. And so he believed he had discovered and come upon the Orient Howerwitz concludes his chapter on Columbus with this, quote, A bookish man, Columbus read widely, but rarely in search of new knowledge. Instead, he sought confirmation of what he thought he already knew, that the Orient lay almost on Europe's doorstep. That belief drove him across the sea. Horowitz continues, Columbus never grasped the immensity of what he had done. The more he saw, the less he learned. The story of the Orient kept overwhelming the evidence of his own senses. Columbus went to his deathbed still convinced that he had just reached the Orient. In the space of four voyages and 12 years, Columbus introduced Europe to a hemisphere that held 28% of the Earth's landmass and millions of unknown people. But Columbus believed that he had only found what he went looking for in the first place. He never knew he discovered America. A small story or a better story. The Orient you know or a whole new continent that you do not know. A stolen body or the risen Jesus. Once upon a time... It just takes a little resurrection imagination to discover who and what has been waiting. Don't miss it and settle for the smaller story. He is risen. So dare to imagine that generosity and kindness are greater than fear and selfishness. He is risen. So dare to imagine that we are not alone, but that we are all held tightly in the love and the power of God. He is risen. So dare to imagine disease and death are not the final word, but rather hope and the new day that is to come. And he is risen. So dare to imagine love wins, God's love, then and now. Once upon a time, the invitation to resurrection imagination The invitation to the better story for such a time as this and all the times that our tomorrows may bring, he is risen, the better story. Amen. Letting go of every single dream each one down at your feet every moment of my wandering never changes what you see i've tried to win this war i confess my hands are weary i need your rest mighty warrior king of the fight no matter what you're by my side when you
head you have not seen so in all things be my life and breath i want what you want lord and nothing less when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters i wish i could walk through when you don't give the answers Trust, I will trust in you. 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 Let us join together in prayer as Christ's body joined together in God's love with the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Holy God, who art in heaven and also with us as we ponder our daily bread, the pandemic and good health care practices have reduced our community and increased our feeling of separation. The distance seems far, and while we know that the day will come when things will be back, it's not today, and that is hard. And so, in this Easter season, we listen a little more carefully to the story of resurrection, the better story. He is risen, love wins your love, and so may we know that hope is greater than fear and generosity greater than selfishness. He is risen. And so may we know that we are held tightly in your love and that we are not alone. He is risen. And so may we trust the dawn of the new day. Help us to see the good news and the beauty and the joy of the risen Christ all around us. And help us to share that with each other. We pray for those who are on the front lines every day, medical professionals, police and fire departments, EMTs and ambulance crews, people working in food banks. Keep them safe. Grant them and their families your peace. We pray for those who are out of work and wondering how to pay rent or how to buy groceries or how to make car payments. May generosity and kindness be greater than those needs. We pray for those who feel a growing fear and for those who feel the pull of a depression and a hopelessness. May the kindness of friends and the light of your presence give them hope. We all have concerns and joys in our hearts. You welcome our concerns in our prayers. But you also listen with a smile to our joys. Hear us now as we quietly share a simple joy that we have felt over the last couple days. And Holy God, hear us as we share together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Indeed, he is risen. God's love wins. Trust that love and live into the fullness of the hope of that better story this day and every day. Receive now God's blessing. And I may the love and the power of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, strengthen you and encourage you and grant you hope and peace. <laughs>